It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley are here. They'll be weighing in on the new Xbox One. And believe it or not, Mary Jo has something to say about Hyper-V in the operating system. It's all ahead. Some Hadoop news, too. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley, episode 313, recorded May 23rd, 2013. One box to rule them all. Windows Weekly is brought to you by GoToMyPC from Citrix. GoToMyPC connects you directly to your office Mac or PC from any other computer and from your iPhone and iPad, too. Sign up for a 30-day free trial today at GoToMyPC.com and use the promo code WINDOWS. And by Shutterstock.com. With over 20 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code WINDOWS5. And by Carbonite. Automatically, continually back up your computer files to the cloud whenever you're online for only $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com and use the offer code WINDOWS to get two bonus months with purchase. It's time for Windows Weekly, and I think today it's going to be Hadoop Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. No, just kidding. It's uh, <laughs> it's all about the Xbox. And I have to apologize. Paul Therod's here from the super site for Windows, WindowsSuperSite.com. I have to apologize. Paul Therod's here. I have to, my apologies. <laughs> my deepest See, that's where comma Thanks. blunder is such a problem. I, I ate, shot, and left. Uh, and Mary Jo Foley from All About Microsoft is here. No, I have to apologize because um, I don't know what we were thinking. We should have had you at our Xbox uh, uh, reveal uh, broadcast coverage. Uh, that was that was a horrifically busy day anyway. But okay. Okay. you were here in spirit because I was reading your tweets as we as we watched. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, a tough. One. I was trying to take notes and trying to take screenshots. I was trying to write an article and I was trying to wow, you know, be on Twitter at the same time. And it was. Um, it was a little bipolar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I apologize, too, because we, we really would have liked to have uh, have had you. I just assumed that you were going to be at, in the big tent. No. You decided not to. Because you were no, out I there, was, right? I, well, I was, I was just out there, yeah. Yeah. You could have stayed had you wished. Actually, it's probably good you didn't. I don't know. Was, I go away so much, though. I, I, I was gone for six days, as it was. And, you know, Tech Ed is coming up in a week and a half, and I'll be gone for a week for that. And... And then, of course, at the end of the month, uh, next month, we're coming out to uh, San Francisco for build. And uh, that's going to be in a week-long trip, too. So, I don't know. You know, traveling doesn't get easier when you get older, I've noticed. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, for those who didn't uh, see the uh, video, we did a, there's a Twit Live special, which was pulled by Electronic Arts. So, I can't show you that. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, but we I, don't want anyone promoting our games, Leo. Uh, yeah, you know that's what it was. It was the content, uh, whatever the content ID on YouTube. Uh, I think we've appealed it, but in case we didn't. But here, for those of I you, I would who cut it out, it, put a little thing in. Ladies and says, gentlemen, here's the uh, introducing in two minutes Xbox uh, One, the entire Xbox One reveal, so you can see it all. TV experience, TV, TV and movies, TV, mm -hmm. Xbox, watch TV, 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 uh, TV. TV, TV, watch TV, 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 TV remote, TV experience, TV, 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 sports TV, 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 anybody? TV, 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 Xbox, go home. TV, 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 sports, 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 television, television, TV, television. Television, 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 TV, TV, TV. Xbox is about to become the next water cooler. Sports, television, <laughs> television, it's television. The it's the same I'm size. I'm to announce a live action Halo television series. Television, TV, sports, sports, sports. Television, TV, 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 TV. 
for Call of Duty. Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty. An entirely new Call of Duty for the next generation. Call of Duty, 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 Call of Duty. One of the fascinating new additions to your squad is a dog. This is someone you care about. Call of Duty, 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 Call of Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Call of Duty, 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 Call of
because actually the, that thing was tried first by Microsoft in 2002 with Media Center. He not mentioned, he TV. mentioned, no, no, he mentioned we, and Web TV as well. Okay, but but that was where it started. I mean, let's not, you know, Google no, TV no, made the mistake of doing it again. And now Microsoft not, No, no, you're misunderstanding what he's saying. He's mm -hmm. not saying, oh, see, they stole it from, he's saying it didn't work then and it won't work now because right. we live in a world where people are going to have to use IR blasters and it's I, a, just insane. a crappy experience and that's what killed you know Google what this TV. Is? It, it, Actually, it's funny. It is exactly like the IR controllers that used to be in phones. You know, years and years ago, I did a Microsoft Roadshow when I had a bunch of devices that I threw up on the bed hotel room the night before the first show. And all of a sudden, they all started going beep, bleep, 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 because they were all <laughs> in each other's IR. Oh, that's you know, horrible. Oh, this is absolutely oh, ridiculous. So here we are in the world of Wi Fi, Wi Fi Direct, right. Bluetooth. And the IR blasting? Seriously? I mean, well, that's the state of the be, industry? Because it's the state of the cable box and uh, and the satellite box. Now, there'll be some that'll use HDMI and uh, you can control You know it. what? Um, a device that's future-proof needs to look past this. This is like, uh, you know, we've moved forward to Sirius satellite radio and HD radio, but I'm still building an AM tuner into something. You know, like, this is But not isn't there a risk of going too far too fast? I mean, most of the people who buy this will not have something that can use it. Uh, they'll have to use IR blaster. Uh, so I understand why. I, I mean, I think the pass-through device might have been the mistake that maybe they should have tried that. Right? I, clearly, what they're shooting for is. <laughs> it's, I hate to say it this way, most people are too stupid to handle two HDMI inputs on one TV. Right. So they want you to be able to use right. one, and this will do everything. I get. I get the need. It's just that it's going to be a really bad solution. Right. Uh, to something that you know, uh, it, cable TV boxes are terrible. But let's face it, you turn on your TV and it works. I mean. Adding this extra step, this extra complexity, I just know from experience. I've done a lot of this. It's horribly terrible. It's terrible. Uh, okay. So do, is it a mistake for them to say this is a media or mention TV at all? I mean, I think one of the things that was interesting was NFL. I wasn't clear if where I'm yeah, watching so the NFL from. I like the match of the stats to the that, game. That is interesting, right? So they have this notion that you could have an NFL game on the TV. You could have a... A snapped experience over on the side with live stuff going on. Yeah, you know, stats. your fantasy football yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. That that stuff actually is potentially very yeah, interesting. Yeah, I like that. Well, and that that's one but, of the things you can do if you're doing this overlay. Yeah. So that to me, though, is Xbox Smart Glass, not the way they're doing it. Right. Um, if I'm watching a football game with my friends, right. which I actually do fairly often, it's not clear to me that everyone wants the strip up on the side with stuff going on. What we might want, though, is a phone or a tablet that has the stuff that we care about happening, right. that is connected to the live event. These things don't have to be integrated. You know, they just have to be happening at the same time. I mean, I, 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 we'll see how... I, I, we, I'm so, I, I should probably reserve judgment on this until I actually see it. I mean, uh, it will be interesting to see how this stuff evolves, but I just don't think that the... The live TV stuff just seems like a step back to me. It is a differentiator, though. I mean, I, I guess I should say it is something that no one else is doing. You know, here's one of the things that struck me. Correct me if I'm wrong. It, it feels as if gaming, uh, console gaming, is somewhat commoditized. In fact, you know, they could talk about Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, but it's going to be on the PS4, too. Uh, PS4 yeah, could talk about Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs. Whatever. <laughs> but, but the point is that this experience is mostly yeah. commoditized. Yes, Microsoft, I think, set out 17 exclusive franchise yeah. Actually, by stuff, the way, the, the single worst thing about the video game industry, in my opinion, is this notion of exclusives. You know, that there are certain games you can only get on the ex on the Xbox. There are certain games you can only get in the PS4 or, P you know, whatever whatever the current PlayStation is. Um, I know that this is a differentiator for them. I know this is a competitive advantage and all that kind of thing. But, um, you know, as a gamer, I wish that I could on an Xbox 360 play Uncharted or some of the other games that are available on the PS3 and that right. it would be nice if that kind of thing was a little more agnostic. And I know that they're never going to do that. And, um, you know, because they need these differentiators, right, to sell the, sell the platforms. Well, and, but, and, there's, and in my opinion, there's no longer enough to really make a difference. And so because you have a commoditized platform for gaming on consoles, you have to look at something else to make mm -hmm. the differentiator. I mean, thank goodness they added Blu-ray. Uh, yeah. I know that's a dying, believe me, that's a dying format too. Although it, that too, you know, by the way, so obviously you can play Blu-ray movies. Right. But, um, but Blu-ray yeah. movies are, weird, are really kind of old school too when you think about oh, it. Yeah. I, I get the, the quality yeah. and all that stuff. I, I actually think the primary point behind that is that for whatever retail relationship need that they have, they have to have a physical media and this is the way they can deliver 
huge volumes of game data on one disc, right? I think, I think it's also marketing. I think it's also checkbox. But, you know, this is this is a hard product because uh, as we were talking about in our live broadcast, this has to last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And the world, imagine, uh, t you know, uh, the world, 2003 to 2013, how we did gaming, how we did entertainment, how everything worked has changed 100%. And it's going to probably change even more then. But you have to, when you're selling a product in 2013, make it work sure. for 2013. You can't make a product that's going to work for 2023 only. So <laughs> right. it's a challenge. Right. Actually, that's Sony challenge. tried that, by the way, with this, the PS3. So, yeah, you're yeah, right. That's a real challenge. So I think you include Blu-ray. And by the way... You commented on this. The industrial design on this thing is so bad. It's crazy. Well, it, it's terrible. I don't know. I understand feel like, by the way, I, I want to, uh, I should apologize to Mary Joe because we're going to talk about video games for about an hour here. But, yeah, yeah. Hadoop's um, coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I'm sorry, ready but, to talk about the OS when you guys are. Oh, yeah. And actually, I do <laughs> okay. want to talk about that because it seems like Hypervisor might be in that stack. Hyper-V yeah. will get its day in yeah. the sun in a few yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, because they mentioned three operating systems, and I went... I know a lot about this. Good, good, okay, good, good, good. do your little video game thing, and then yeah, we'll get yeah. to the real stuff. <laughs> okay, well, just quick, uh, you quickly. You boys talk about your yeah, toys. We talk about yeah. Exactly. Um, I just want to say from a hardware perspective, you know, uh, 2005, so eight years ago, you know, I went to Microsoft that May, and I looked at the Xbox 360. They had announced it like they just did here. They had their reveal event with Frodo and all that stuff. Yep. And they, they showed off what the design of the console was going to be in the in the hand controller. Remember, it was white. It was Apple looking. Yeah, it, it was horrible. Kind of a oh, I had design. one of those, yeah. And I remember they showed me their development workstation, which was like two G5s chained together. <laughs> right. It made as much noise as an airplane. Right. And we were going through the demos, and we were playing it on a wired controller connected to these Macintosh computers. And I said, I, I don't understand how you're going to fit all that stuff in this little box. Uh -huh. You know, and they said... Oh, you know, we we get guys, and we, we know how to do that. And clearly, in retrospect, they had no idea. Red ring of death. So this is definitely <laughs> a well-cooled box. Well, I was going to say, this machine, which is approximately the size of Mary Jo's apartment, <laughs> is... I know. She's uh, never going to buy this. It's, it, when we, I saw I that, know. I'm like, there is nowhere to put that in here. No. <laughs> well, you could probably put, like, a mattress on top of it and just turn it into, like, a platform bed or something. But, but, it ha but it's, it's, it's vented heavily. I mean, it's all... It's like it's a Swiss crazy cheese. crazy yeah. yeah, so the, I don't think there's going to be an, any overheating problem. No. on this particular machine. Yeah. You know? uh, that's the first thought I had is they're just, they don't want to take a chance with that. Um, yeah, and I do, I am glad they preserved the controller, uh, added some features, but essentially it's an Xbox controller. The Xbox controller is per basically perfect. It's pretty I mean, much perfect, yeah. yeah. They added a D And that a was D something, button. they got it right as long ago as the second controller they released on the original Xbox. Remember the first one was this gigantic, fat, kind of weird thing. And then they came out, I want to say they called it the S controller. The second one, and that basically kind of carried over to the 360. It was basically the same design. Um, they, they've done a really good job with the hand controller over time. Yeah. So uh, I think so that one's okay. I think, they, I think that uh, it's a little ugly. It's obviously little, yeah. intended for a home uh, entertainment unit. Um, this is not what I would call modern uh, design. No, it's crazy looking. Um, this but, is not the Surface console uh, right. that maybe they could have made, but... Some interesting things, though, in the hardware. This is a, a 1080p camera, a very good camera, which will be used both for the... Will it be used for the Kinect and the Skype, or is it just for the uh, Skyping? That's a good camera. It's both. It's both. Yeah. Yeah. That is a really nice camera. I'm glad Kinect comes with it, and it sounds like they've vastly improved Kinect. Is that, does mm -hmm. that seem to be the case? Yeah, it's 1080p, and it's, you know, I, I, Kinect is one of those things I'm still in kind of a wait-and-see path with, but... You know, they did these wireframes in the past where they could say, look, it's following your movements. And this time it can track where your eyes are well, looking. Where your thumb very, is pointed, you know. Yes. I yeah. mean, very minute things as well as mass. You know, it has this notion of your muscle mass, the mass of your right. body and understanding of that you're displacing an area, you know. But Mary uh, Jo, you got to look at this. This is the one-two punch. And then there's controllers yeah. and go, I would need new shelving. I would need. Plus yeah. a cable box too, right? Yeah. And, and a TV. Right. <laughs> And a TV, right, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. let's really yeah, get. You don't serious. even have that. So I mean, <laughs> wow, is that something Darth Vader would make? I mean, it just really it, it, right. It does have that look to it. Wow. But uh, from from a from the point of view of functionality, I'm actually pretty happy. I I uh, it's going to be an eight core processor, eight gigs of RAM, big hard drive, mm -hmm. five hundred gig hard drive, which made me yep. think: Are there going to be DVR features? What are you going to do with five hundred gigs? No, you're going to install every single game to the hard drive. The games so will actually, go on the hard drive, huh? Automatically, yeah. That's great. Yep. 
That means fast load times, uh, fast level loads, things like that. I like that. And that's so that means that Blu-ray disc isn't for games. It's just, uh, I guess you'll buy a game on Well, disc. it's to load the game originally, but then, and then that's yeah. it. Then you're done. Um, all right. So they said, Mary Jo, they said three operating systems. They said right. Windows, and I presume they meant Windows 8, the Windows kernel. Uh, and then uh, on, I'm sorry. Uh, if, I just want to say we're just going into this topic. If Windows 8 had been a success, they would have said, said Windows the 8. operating system is yeah. Windows 8. Yeah, they did. They said <laughs> that's it, that's how they would have said just Windows. Yep. Uh, no number. Okay, so let, let me describe what they built because I've talked to a few different people about good, this, good, and good. the most interesting thing is Dave Cutler did a big part of this. So Dave Cutler, the father of Windows NT. NT. Remember, we yeah. we talked about him going to the Xbox team like about two or three years ago and everyone's yeah. like, wow, what's he going to do there? Yeah. Well, what he did was he took uh, Windows, stripped out all the goop, as they said, and just kept the Hyper-V hypervisor. Wow. Then, then they took that hypervisor and they built two partitions for the Xbox. One partition is just for games. The other one is a Windows core. So, you know, just like we have a Windows phone and Windows 8, Windows RT, and they are going to put all the apps on that side. So the idea is because this is two VMs on a hypervisor, you'll be able to quickly switch between games and apps. Um, this is this is all theoretical. We, I mean, we saw demos, but this is what how they're describing it. And we can't that, say for that sure context how fast switching it is. is is built into the hardware. So it's yeah. it's virtually instantaneous. Right. And so then on the on the app side, you get a lot of the features that we, we've seen with Windows 8. So you, it, you've actually got something that looks like snapping on the Windows right. side. That was that football thing where, you, yep. you, yeah, cool. Yep. And it, that so was Windows 8 snapping, wasn't it? It, it basically was, yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, even though we're saying one side is Windows and one side is a gaming operating system also built on top of a Windows core, no that's, doubt. That's um, UI, right? That's just UI. Right, right. It's all modified, heavily modified. So, you know, a couple of people when they, when they saw this demo were saying, so if one side is Windows 8, basically, can't I just run SharePoint on it? <laughs> people did actually ask that. I'm not making this up. I am not making this up. <laughs> oh, that is, <laughs> you oh, cannot. Lord. The answer is you probably cannot because of how heavily modified it is right. like they just took the core you know like the graphic right. stack the networking stack um some of the security features um and that kind of thing and they really modded it so you can't run sharepoint over there or crm or anything else like that tv zegon says it's the mullet of console system windows <laughs> up front gaming in the back that's good like <laughs> nice and hype is is hypervisor uh, the middle part of the three Kind yes. of. Okay. So right. Hyper-V so is, and that's there for the what? It's the thing that switches. It's, it's the, the thing that does switcher. the switching, okay. the management. Right. Um, it, it's it's like kind of like the guts of it, and the other two things are the things that sit on top in two VMs. Could you uh, also, because you've got Hyper-V on there, perhaps run an Xbox 360 emulation mode? A lot of people have asked that, yeah. and um, they've made it pretty clear they consider that not a sound strategy, They're but gonna, I wonder. You know, they say that now because they want people to develop for the new box, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't want any developer to sit back and say, hey, no problem. This is harder than people think it is. I mean, the, the, the yeah. 360 is on a PowerPC architecture. Right. So they don't, right. You know, Hyper-V uh, emulates x86. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So it's not, Hyper-V is not virtualization like virtual PC was. No, but, you know, I, I don't know if you caught this, Paul. And When they did the architecture panel, they mentioned this just in a quick sentence, but they said, so underneath that you've got Hyper-V, but you also have remote FX, um, which was interesting. Right. What's that? Uh, What's so that? Remote so, FX is, it, yeah, I should let you describe that because I'm sure you can do a better well, job. Well, no, it's just the simplest way to say it is, you know, starting with Windows Vista, Microsoft has had these uh, 3D effects in, in the operating system. And one of the problems with doing remote desktop access to these versions of Windows is that, uh, until they improved it with remote effects, it was very hard to get those effects through yeah. remote desktop. And so this is a way from a sort of a VDI solution to get, um, you know, basically the 3D effects through right. so uh, over, in, in a, which, over a remote connection. In which case you could do an online, on live style Xbox 360 mm. on the server. They even kind of intimated they did. this. They hinted that. They did. Yeah, they talked about rendering, right, yeah. um, in the server cloud. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's very and Xbox. It's a way to put you put graphics cards in the servers in the data center, right? 
do the processing there and then blast the results over the line. Right. Yep. And that would also explain why. How many servers do they say they're going to yeah. have? They said 300, <laughs> they're going to have 300,000 Xbox Live servers. I can't servers. believe they provided a number for that, you know? Uh, it was kind of stunning because right now they have um, 15,000 Xbox servers. They're going to increase it by Xbox Live 20. The, yeah. 20. Yeah. Which is wow. really it's crazy. It's all because of 4K support, I bet. Ah, yeah. let's ask about. Let's talk about 4K. <laughs> that's built in, is it not? That's what they said. I mean, there's, uh, there aren't many 4K TV sets out there. And nor today. does HDMI support 4K at this point. So, uh, uh, is that true? Yeah. I, I was wondering no, that's true. That. So, I'm curious how they're going to make that work. I mean, I, I just speaking historically, the when the Xbox 360 came out, it was 720p. Uh, they did not have HDMI in the beginning if I'm not mistaken. They added HDMI to the console over time. It went up to 1080i. And then, you know, through some series of software updates, apparently they, I guess the underlying 1080p capability was already th always there. And so today you could do 1080p right. on an Xbox 360. Is there um, any other video out besides, is there any other a, data out at all besides the uh, HDMI? On this new console? Yeah. No, not, not just that HDMI. we've seen. Yeah. Oh, HDMI 1.4 does support 4K, uh, the chat room's telling oh. me. So that yeah. would be possible on the uh, latest HDMI. Okay. That, that's got to yeah. be what they so have. Then, presumably because... what they'd be using. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, the, so besides um, Hyper-V and uh, VMs and all that, they also mentioned just in passing Windows Azure as part of huh. this whole Xbox thing, too. Uh -huh. Well, um, if you have 300,000 servers, you might as it well. Has to be, it has to be Windows Azure. Yeah, I have to it's use not. Azure. What? It's that, not. Oh, come on, really? Nope. Really? Uh, as far as I it's know, Amazon it is not. Amazon Web Services? You're no. talking about Windows. <laughs> you, mean, you mean Windows Azure for developers, like they can do rendering yes. in with Azure? Right. right. Okay. Sorry. Right. So when they talk about those 300 servers, those are the Xbox Live servers. Xbox Live does not run on Windows Azure. Okay. All right. And... So this extra stuff that they're talking about, you know, being able to pass off some of the processing to the cloud and having game developers offload parts of their apps to the cloud, that's where Azure comes in. Um, so a lot of people just said, oh, 300,000 Azure servers. No, that isn't what they ever said, actually. <laughs> huh. Right. Yeah. Right, I asked right. I asked the Azure team and they, and they just said game developers can choose to build por parts of their games using services on top of Azure. Um, and that's all they really so said. So by the way, though, why, now, why would you do that, right? Why would you build a game on top of Azure? I mean, one reason might be that, for whatever reason, that's cost-effective. You're just creating a, an Xbox game, and that's what you're doing. But I actually think the most compelling case for that would be you're creating a game that runs multi-platform, and you can have the non-platform-specific stuff in Azure, and so that it works across the PC, the mm -hmm. phone, whatever you're targeting for the, mm -hmm. for the game. And hopefully yep, that's that part, of, part of that story, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the other we didn't hear almost anything. Well, we didn't hear anything. We should just say about the developer <laughs> platform, right? We don't know anything about the developer platform for the next Xbox, and um, they, that's going to be build. I'm I'm about ninety nine percent sure uh, that would be the Xbox right logo on the build homepage. I mean, there, it would be the time to do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you got the yeah. developers together, right? Mm. So I saw so many people saying they didn't even say, you know, how is XNA supported or, you know, <laughs> what the story is. And I'm like, you know, okay. But is, Silverlight, is this Silverlight supported? No. Because Silverlight yeah. people are very, you know, we know. <laughs> it's visual touchy. basic And actually I was a little build. surprised to hear no indie developer at all. Uh, well, I, uh, you know yeah. what? So we don't know what's going on there. We but I, but Mary, Jane, I, Mary Jo and I both believe that, or hope maybe, <laughs> that that stuff will be announced at build. I mean, they would be crazy not to put out something called like Win XRT right. that is a way for Windows developers to write code that is very similar and or identical across. You got all these Windows x86 8, developers code. out there. Yeah. yeah. You know, you got to support them. They don't have to go through Microsoft to put their stuff out. Right. Never talked about a store, right? Right. No. Even though a store is clearly built into Xbox Live today. I mean, right. so I think you're going to hear that more stuff. Did. Lots more. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think, yeah. though, I, I, I worry people are thinking it's all going to be one and all going to be sorted out by the time of build. Like, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, so that means there's going to be one store that's Xbox <sighs> One, Windows Phone, and Windows. No, it doesn't mean that at all. In fact, I keep hearing not this year. Not, no one unified store this year. And, yeah, they might do that XRT thing, but that also still means there are differences in these platforms. And people shouldn't just say, okay, so if I build a Windows Phone app, I can run it everywhere. It doesn't work like that. 
sadly. You Although, can reuse chunks of your code, but... <laughs> it is worth pointing out, though, that um, when you compare Windows 8 RT to Windows Phone 8, the one place that you can make a single executable that basically works across both is games. Um, mm -hmm. There are some things you still have to, you know, uh, make correct, you know, on the phone with regards to specific resolutions, but a DirectX game written with C++, uh, that's one case where it's pretty, pretty close. To, it's not 100%, but it's like 90%, 90, you know, it's very close. So if they do this right, and, and for all of their foibles and all of the silliness with Microsoft, you know, the one thing they've always done right is uh, the developer stuff. And uh, they've always done a good job on that. So again, we have to wait and see, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was a very good story. Another thing that got people a little bit upset was the uh, impl implication that you wouldn't be able to resell games, that a game is registered to you and you alone. I, don't, that's, I think that's been proven false that's already, not true. hasn't it? Okay. They, yeah. they, um, made, they gave an answer that was a little bit inconclusive still, but um, leaning towards you're going to have a way to use resold games, but they didn't really get into the details. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are some theories that maybe the person buying the used game will have to pay a fee or something right. to make that happen or whatever it is. But I, the way I understand it or the way I believe it to be is that the when you install that game, it's either tied to your live, you know, your, sorry, your Microsoft account or to the console even. And that this is part of the thing that enables multiple users to access a single Xbox Live Gold account to, uh, to play games online and do all that kind of stuff. Um, it also enables you to pl keep playing the game on the console, even when the disc isn't installed in the drive, which is one of the silly things you have to do today on the 360. So the question under that situation or that scenario would be, okay, well, now I have this game I don't want to play anymore. I want to sell it to someone else through GameStop or eBay or whatever. You know, how do we make that happen? And uh, they just have, I think, I think it basically amounts to they just don't know the specifics yet, but um, the intimation is that they're, this will be possible. It's just not clear what the details are. Mm -hmm. That's a relief because obviously people like EA don't want you to be able to do that. <laughs> and, um, right. and we, we should all always do what EA, EA wants us to do. So, hey, I got to tell you, EA was front and center, man. They were. This yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, they were the first developer to take the stage. Yeah, but, well, let me ask you a question, Leo. When you're playing Battlefield, can you have a dog? Because if you can't, <laughs> no, God, no, only on Call of Duty. Or you know as, we call, as we call it now, Collar Duty. If they had Collar. a cat on Call of Duty, I might get an Xbox. Exactly. I want a cat. <laughs> Battle a cat. cat would mess people up. That would that be like would. a um, a perk in multiplayer. You know, you get like ten kills in a row, then you get the cat. Awesome. I want a cat. The cat with just lasers. runs around the level and wipes out people. That'd yes. be so awesome. <laughs> Wouldn't yes. it be cool? And why does it have <laughs> so to be awesome. a German Shepherd? Why couldn't it be a Papillon? A Chihuahua? Because oh, if it was a dog, the dog would just walk over wagging his tail. You'd pet him, and everything would be fine. <laughs> you know, the cat. The, the cat, cat doesn't, doesn't care. care. The cat doesn't care what you have. The cat. The only reason the, cat, the cats gonna, don't the cat eat you is because you're too big. If a cat had weapons, it'd be all over. It'd rule the world. You can even call it Naughty Mildred after Dr. Pizza's cat. <laughs> I, I told you that about my cats, right? I can, they look at me. They just sit there and they look. And I, yeah. I know what they're thinking. They're thinking, they're thinking, food? If I was as big as you and you were as big as me, this conversation mm. would be very Over. different. <laughs> <laughs> Over. I think thing. that too, but I don't say it. Oh. <laughs> oh. As long as we've got lasers. <laughs> Uh, and the always on thing, which, which we buried a long time ago, they kind of, uh, they, you know, it's, it's the always on. So you could, it's, it's the heartbeat. It's, it's exactly the heartbeat. What, yeah. 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 Yep. Um, so I'm still waiting for all those people on Twitter to come back and apologize. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it was like raked over the coals for that one for yeah, weeks. Like, yeah. What, uh, overall, are you feeling pretty bullish? I mean, I, I, I know there's, you know, pros and cons, but are you feeling pretty bullish? You're going to buy one right away? Of course you are. Yeah, I mean, I, I will, I'll do the due diligence thing. And I, I mean, I'll buy the new Xbox. I'll buy one of the PS4s as well and look at that. I mean, you, you know, you never know. Can I tell you, as, uh, as probably uh, one of the markets are going after the, the, the gamer, but not, not hardcore gamer who also mm -hmm. is interested in media stuff, uh, this, uh, comparing this to the PS4, this is a no-brainer for me. I want the Xbox One. Wow, that's good to hear. Yeah, I think that I think that they hit the sweet spot for people like me. Now, whether that's who they want to hit, I don't know. Sure. But uh, I think they do, though. I think they do. They're always going to have the you know they have some good exclusive IP. You know, Halo, Gears yeah. of War, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So that, that those guys are always going to be there. Uh, in fact, they're, they're kind of easy to please when you think about it. Clearly, I just I think I just purchased Call of Duty Seventeen or whatever they're right. calling it. 
I mean, they didn't mention the Gears stuff. of War. They they mentioned Halo, but only because they're going to do a TV show, which has absolutely nothing to do with Xbox. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, it's, you know. Uh, yeah, that that cracked me up. Well, that's nice. You're doing a TV show. Good. And can we see more Xbox stuff now? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but we are doing. We're going to do a lot of TV shows, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got yeah. you know you got the products. It's trans. What we call yeah. transmedia. By the way, for whatever it's worth, Xbox uh, Halo is a is a great topic for a live action TV series. In fact, Gears of War would make for an excellent TV series or even a mini series, whatever. There's a lot of video game stuff like that that I think would be good uh, in a live action kind of format. There was a. Um, when the new Ghost Recon came it came out a couple of years ago, they made a short film. I think you can still get it on Netflix. It's actually really, really good. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Maybe that was for Black Ops. I don't remember. It was one of those games. It's good. Well, in any event, I I, I think it spoke to my uh, my ilk quite well. <laughs> Your ilk? My ilk. My ilk <laughs> feels Jeez. happy. Oops. It turned my ilk to milk. Um, so so uh, that's disgusting. Uh, so, but no, I feel like that, and maybe that all that TV stuff was part of it. You know, the NFL thing, I know that's a mm. narrow slice, but, but that narrow slice oh. is jumping up and down. No, fair enough. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and, and I, I, I just really consider gaming commoditized. There aren't enough, uh, you know, I'm not a Gears of War fanatic, so I don't, I don't really you care. You know what it is though? If you, if you've ever done like a smart app thing, like, you know, uh, Games of Thrones being the opposite of the obvious. Uh, yes. Example. Smart glass on Game of Thrones um, would be amazing. Amazon has a, um, a similar experience right on the Kindle for certain uh, TV shows and, and movies and so forth. You know, okay. You know, it, it, it's good, right? It's good for what it is, but I just don't know that this is a huge market, you know, for people. Like, I don't know that, I, I think no, we're still I trying agree. to hit on that mainstream Use. I mean, years and years ago, Microsoft was touting interactive TV and this notion that you could watch certain TV shows on random fifth level networks and chat with your buddies about right. the show at the same time. And they've always been kind of looking for something uh, that is this next level interactive TV experience. And, you know, we'll see. Well, I mean, let me maybe ask this you this because I think you already do this. Mm -hmm. Instead of TeamSpeak, now you can have Skype with your buddies on a, in, in, a, in the part of the screen while you're playing Call of Duty. Wouldn't that be awesome? It's, okay, so, yeah, years and years ago when I used to play games like uh, Duke Nukem 3D and uh, the original Quake and Quake World, you know, we used to get online uh, and play these games when I was still living in Phoenix or whatever, and we would actually be on the phone together. And we would chat, you know, we would talk, I mean, you know, on the phone. And, before, you know, you'd have the phone click into your neck like an idiot and get the crook yeah, thing going. Yeah, and I don't think this is an unusual use. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to see these people when I'm playing games with them, but because uh, most of them probably are, like, shirtless and, um, you know, <laughs> unclean. But um, it's <laughs> – but, yeah. I, I, no, sure. I think this is great. And, I, and I'm and – you know, a lot – everybody now or a lot of people, when you're playing Call of Duty and, you know, in team mode, uh, you're wearing the headset. Mm -hmm. You're talking to each other. Uh, I think that it's a natural to kind of put it into Skype. Uh, I think, you know, not the games I play, but the actual tactical type games where you yes. can have maybe a, a grid on the side team of the stuff? other guys. And yeah. And that stuff, yeah, absolutely. Could, that could be incredible. Those experiences could be amazing. I think that's going to be great. And and I think that that's... A, a, the Connect is a strong secret weapon. What has PlayStation got? Move? Come on. <laughs> Connect is a strong <laughs> secret weapon, and Microsoft yeah. owns Skype. And I think that the, this the integration that you're going to oh, get here is great. Yeah. Skype is yeah. the communications platform for the Xbox is amazing. Yeah, yeah. and I think uh, finally Smart Glass makes some sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they didn't really show it much. They mentioned it, but they didn't show a you know application. They didn't really show anything. I mean, uh, if you went through their press materials, what they actually had was a a screenshot of the new Xbox Smart Glass for Windows that's coming out sometime ah, later. All right. Um, it's, it's kind of buried in there, but it's, you know, Metro type app. Uh, it doesn't look super different from what's available today, but I still think they're looking for that killer app, you know, whatever it is where you can say, 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 right. You know, and, and anyone would yes. agree that this is incredible. Game of Thrones is, but it's a small minority. That's yeah. a, that's a show that's so damn complicated. You need a family <laughs> tree on the side of the screen. Yeah, yeah. Who's that? <laughs> What's he? Who is he's? Who's don't get too attached because they're gonna die. Who's uncle? <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. I don't know who they you are, know, but they're gonna die. Aren't they brother and sister? Wait a minute. <laughs> I, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Well, one thing I was kind of surprised they didn't show. Um, 
Although, you know, they decided to keep it to an hour so they couldn't show everything. But I really thought they were going to show something that would appeal more to the international audience. Like instead of NFL, why not show soccer? Right. You I might, don't know. I'll tell you why. Actually, the reason right. is they don't have live TV outside of the United States. Oh, <laughs> so oh, yeah, okay. I, I can assure you that they would have done that if they could have. But, can I yeah. tell you what the potential is with the World Cup coming up next year? Yeah, and, no kidding. I mean, there is huge potential. They got to find a way to do that. And I imagine there's a suit or two, or three yeah. or four or a hundred at Microsoft who are okay. making, we're <laughs> talking right now to FIFA and saying, what can we do? How can we make this work? Yeah, totally. That, and that's the, the, happen. Other one, the other one I thought they should have and could have shown was something that would appeal more to women, right? I know there are women who are into the NFL, but like, why not a reality show around the Food Network or something like that? It's very stereotypical. Mary, Mary Jo, you know. Mary jo. what is Come wrong on. with her? You are going to love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa this, was jumping up and down when she saw the NFL. I know. I swear to, people, we can't wait. We, but we yeah. watch Bill Maher and she goes, why are there always one guy, two women, I'm yeah. sorry, one, two hot, one woman and two guys. One hot woman and two guys. Every yeah, it's time. always like, right. There's like, Bimba, like every time. It, it's, we have this conversation like every She's time right. we see anything. Like, Yeah, she is right. She is right. I Yeah. You guys are going to love each other. They did show the price but, is right. <laughs> but um, Yeah, the price you, is right. Okay, yeah. <sighs> the price is right. Like so many people after this was over said to me, Mary Jo, so you're going to buy the Xbox One, right? And I said, I have not seen a single thing no, that her. interested me in that. Mary Jo Foley, come on down. <laughs> There'll be a, a Connect app where you can share like the Barbie dream house, you know. Or how about a beer app? Thing. Come on. Beer. There'll be beer apps. Right. They were better. I beer think group uh, conferencing, group video calling is going to be a very big yeah. app. Yeah. That's true. Actually, I do too. I, 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 that make that makes a lot more sense to me than the live TV stuff. Um, although I guess it transcends the live TV stuff because potentially the Xbox thing, I'm sorry, the uh, the Skype thing could occur while you're doing anything, you know. Um, so uh, we'll see. We'll see. Anything. <laughs> anything, Leo. Anything. <laughs> I'd do anything. All right. I'm sorry, I had a bite of food there. Let's do. Let's do the. Um, let's take a break. Do we have anything else to say about the Xbox before we? We actually, I see some rumors, so we'll get to those, okay. and then we can talk about Google some more. <laughs> what, is there something Google in here? No. Well, it says Google and Microsoft sitting in a tree. B a s h i n g. Oh, Mary, yeah. Mary Jo wrote that little <laughs> dog. Girl. I did not. <laughs> no. No responsibility <laughs> for that. She had a nice headline, and I just changed it. She <laughs> <laughs> wrote me in one note. Oh, we ow! <laughs> what happens when you have? Ow! I want to see all the revisions. I need a revision tracker in one note. <laughs> Actually, uh, there is a revision tracker in one. Oh, I can turn that on. I'm in one note MX or whatever they call it these days. So wait, should we should we talk connect on Wind connect Windows one brief second before? Yeah. So they so that's yeah. Actually, that's something I was interested in. Yeah. So today uh, they announced. At, well, they kind of hinted at this earlier in the week, but they announced for sure today that there is going to be a new Connect for Windows sensor. It's coming out in 2014. Um, it's going to pick up a lot of the technologies in, that are in the new Connect for Xbox One, um, like the ability to see people's hands and textures and low light uh, improvements around low light <laughs> recognition. This is, the, this is for the crucial jazz hands. Yes. <laughs> Functionality in Windows. Exactly. And then they uh, they said they're also going to talk about um, the developer story for this at Build, but they didn't actually go so far as to say the Connect for Windows SDK will be out at Build. It could be, maybe, maybe not. Yep. So but there is one coming. There is one coming. With the pres yes. Presumably with the 1080p and all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, SDK as well as oh. the device. In other yeah. words. Does, now, that, that talking to Xbox, that's already in at Connect, right? It is. Yeah. How well does that work? Well, uh, because I never I'm a normal use it. person, I never actually use it. Yeah, so, okay. uh, <laughs> That's why I'm asking, because I never <laughs> yeah. use it. I know no, I no, can my, do it, uh, but I never use it. There was It was very was funny to watch on Twitter. A hundred square feet, so I can't actually use Connect. <laughs> there were a lot of people on Twitter who said, damn it, they stopped every time they talk to the Xbox. My, my Connect listens and it turns off the stream. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, that so is awesome. It's the same commands, but I, you know... Uh, it, on in theory, the idea of saying let's watch Oprah, and having it do that is great. Mm -hmm. I just have never used it. So did anyone else well, catch this sort of? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, sort of. Yeah, I was going to say you could maybe. say Snap Xbox, Snap <laughs> Internet Explorer. They showed that right. Oh. See, I would walk through the room. My kids would be watching TV, and I'd be like Xbox off. 
<laughs> you know, on the way by. Dad! But, I, but there was sort of a hint that maybe part of the personalization that you would get might include voice, voice recognition, yes. meaning understanding who was who. Yes, it said that. Right? They said we know who's who. It could yeah. be the camera, but... Yeah, it might just be the camera. Yeah. And, and certainly that's how it works today, but... Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Why Why couldn't it recognize basic voice patterns about who was who? I don't sound like my daughter, you know. Can it distinguish between people? I thought it... Well, that's what I'm wondering. Ability. Like they said, when it... No, when it said you they could. Room, oh, I thought they, they said it couldn't. They said it could. No, could. it could. Right. When they you come into specific. the room, it knows it's you. It knows it's right? you. Yeah. Yeah, and as likely the high commander of the Xbox household, I should be able to turn off the TV when I want. <laughs> yes, Paul. <laughs> whatever you say, Paul. Yes. I, you know, I'm going to buy it right away. What do you think? Four ninety nine. Yep. That's what you've been saying all along. Can't yeah, they be didn't more. announce that. No, they uh, didn't say uh, it. I know. But. I, I, I'm just guessing now, but I'm guessing that they didn't announce the price because they're going to wait and see what Sony does. Right. I think that even if Sony went as low as three ninety nine on the PS4, they wouldn't change a thing. But I suppose that Sony, you never know, I mean, uh, what will happen. And so I, they're obviously reserving that for later. Sony, I think, is going to go high. Mm. I well, think I think they're, they're going to go low. Yeah. Well, we shall see. No, I don't either, but yeah, let them go first. Yeah. yeah, no, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. All right, we're going to come back with more. We've got some rumors and stuff, but let's talk right now about Go to My PC from Citrix, the easiest, best way to access your Windows PC from anywhere or your Mac from anywhere or your Mac from a Windows PC or your PC from a Mac or an iPad to a Windows. You get the idea. Go to My PC is the best remote access ever created. It's fast. It's easy to use. And because it uses NAT traversal, you don't have to punch a hole in the firewall. You don't have to use UPnP. It just, it just works. Uh, IT doesn't have to get involved. I'm a big fan. In fact, we use it all the time. And uh, I love the idea that I can use my iPhone or my Android phone to access my computer from work, my iPad to access my computer anywhere I am. I never have to be without my office computer, even if I'm on the road. And you know, a lot of times you need some, you know, the files are on the computer or the PowerPoint slide or whatever. Uh, it's secure, 128-bit SSL. It's easy to use and it's fast and it sets up so quickly. So before you leave work today, why don't you why don't you go to uh, the website, go to mypc.com, click the orange try it free button and use the offer code windows, you'll get 30 days free. That's before you leave work. Just put it on your PC. And then uh, download the free software for your device and hit the road. It's amazing to use a uh, a Windows PC from your iPhone. It's a real experience. Go to mypc.com. Use the offer code Windows to try it free for 30 days. Windows Weekly, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. And uh, you want to go through some of the rumors before we move on from uh, Xbox One? Yeah, these are the <laughs> these are kind of the rest of the rumors. You know, so in other words, we I had received a bunch of rumors uh, about the Xbox. And, and by the way, it seemed like we everything that you had heard was pretty accurate. Well, these being from a source that I'm actually not sure of. So I had some stuff that I talked about publicly that I was positive about because they come from kind of an unassailable source. But um, there's a, another source who uh, clearly has been hitting up the other blogs because I see this stuff almost word for word uh, elsewhere. Um, and, I, you know, this sort of a vetting process that kind of needs to occur. But a lot of this stuff, guys, a lot of this guy's stuff has been pretty good. So you may recognize some of these um, as being actual posts from other sites because other people have used some of this information. But just given the fact that the three, I'm sorry, the, I, I want to call it 360, that the Xbox One has been announced uh, and not completely announced because there's more coming. I mean, here's some of the other stuff that you know he was talking about. Uh, for example, a first uh, party, meaning a Microsoft uh, branded gaming headset with a remote control um, he says now that they're not planning on cutting the price of the X3, Xbox 360. Um, you may recall at the Xbox One event that they alluded to the fact that they would have an Xbox 360 announcement of some kind coming at E3. Uh, my source had previously told me that there would be a very low cost new Xbox 360 coming this year uh, that is codenamed Stingray. And um, I assume we're talking about the same thing here. And so he's suggesting that this will not be any cheaper than the current generation version. So I guess we can sit, wait and see what happens there. 
Um, he talked about how games will play and pause immediately on the Xbox One through installation of the hard drive. That This is correct. They actually uh, did announce that. Uh, no booting. That's we'll so play great. While yeah, so that's good stuff. I love that. Um, and then the, the top two here are things that you may have seen published elsewhere. So Microsoft is finally moving to dollars uh, or you know, oh, local, no, cur local no more, currency. No more points. Oh. You know, it's gonna, it, it's, I envision this being like the switch over to the euro where there's a there's a time period where you can bring in your francs and your, uh, <laughs> you know, your whatever your local currency is. And then after some time it gets cut off. I don't know how they're going to do that. Exactly. Gold, uh, gold um, Xbox gold points amnesty. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the other one was another launch title, which they did not um, announce at this event. Although, actually, there's information about this on the web now. So this one has also been proven true. Uh, proven true. Um, a game called Rice, uh, which is set in the Roman Empire times, kind of a hack and slash thing. I hope that's, that's true because that looks kind of kind of cool. It apparently is true because I believe there's a, there's a website for it. So, so, you know, some interesting stuff in there, uh, definitely. Are you glad? Are you happy they did not name it the 720? Well, I, okay, I, we knew that was never going to happen. That no. would be such a terrible name. Time. And Infinity wasn't <laughs> such a good name. No, there was, what were some of the other ones they had? Uh, oh, there was another one that was getting a lot of play right there, right at the end there. I, I, I honestly thought they were going to call it Xbox, you know? Just Xbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One is kind of the same, though, isn't it? Oh, and it's like you know, the Star Mary Trek Joe, reset. Mary Jo mentioned to me that uh, about a year or two ago, there was a big leak about the Xbox. And that we should go back and look at that, you know, and, oh, yeah. and compare See, it to what happened. Up. That's right. That was um, that slide deck or something, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, forwarded me a little bit of that and said, you know, they actually alluded to the name of this Xbox in that documentation oh. because they kept talking about one box. Oh. One ah, box that will do this. One box, you know. Oh. And uh, it, they never said Xbox One, but it was always the it was the one box, you know. Yep. And um, if you think back to the original mm -hmm. Xbox, the, the name Xbox comes from Direct Xbox which was the name of it. It was a way to get the DirectX gaming engine into a box. And so oh. the, the, the name DirectX box is hard oh. to say, and it kind of got truncated down to Xbox. And so in many ways, this new name uh, is a continuation of that theme. It's kind of interesting. Yep. So how much of that deck was accurate? I never actually looked at it. <laughs> so that, yeah. uh, that's something I should do. I, I will do yeah. that this week. I bet a lot of it is. Well, so one of the things that didn't happen, though, was remember they had those Fortaleza glasses. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, that, which, I think that was uh, shown as 2014, though, in the deck. Okay. Still could well, happen. I was going to say, it's, it's something that definitely could happen. Yeah. Still yeah, yeah. could happen. Yeah. They, obviously, they want to do stuff over time. There's that Aluma Room uh, technology. That I where, want. I really, I, I really yeah. want that. Yeah. The only problem is, like, right now, um, it, it's sort of like <laughs> duct taping a, a flashlight to a gun. And looking down the barrel, you know what I mean? Right. Like in this case, what it requires is, is the connect to be duct taped to a projector, you know, but it's not inconceivable that they come out with a next gen uh, connect for this console that will have a projector built into it. And that what it will do is project um, periphery display or on the walls around your TV to provide you with a new kind of interactive experience, which, you know, potentially could be pretty cool and is certainly plausible. This uh, this is pretty. Uh, this deck is pretty vague, but it's exactly right. I mean, it's ex and it does. You're right, right at the top. One mm -hmm. box, input one. Get one box. Yeah, the only box you need for one box. By the way, yeah, and one input. And, I, and you know, it's that's really interesting to me. And that's the live TV thing, right? In other yep. words, yep. The, the point of this is to present this to a, a person and say, look, you have all these different boxes on different HDMI inputs. Let's just use one. Yeah, this can be the one. Yeah, you know. So we'll let's see. see let's see what we should really see what 2014 and 2015 hold on this slide mm -hmm. because sure. uh, this this is clearly this slide is genuine and uh, and had some prescience. Heads up, hands free device. That's probably the connect. He right? Heads up and hit. That sounds like glasses to me. It does sound like glasses, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Seamless integration of the digital world with the physical world. That sounds like the room. Tele that sounds like transmutation. Yeah. <laughs> Innovative local So that sensors. will be a big thing for next holiday. Season. Yeah. Uh, Body latest and yeah. greatest experience without upgrading hardware. That sounds like 4K maybe. Uh, contextual applications and experiences. I think they are seeing this more as a living room device, aren't they? Oh, yeah. 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 This stuff is so big, it doesn't mean anything. Largest and most immersive screen. Well, but it doesn't. But in hindsight, it, it, it uh, did kind of, you know, Point in the right direction. So, That's you know, it'd be exciting. awesome is an Xbox One with a 4K pix. What's it called? The uh, perceptive oh pixel, pixel. display. Yeah. I was thinking that too. 
That will be like with the, the Intel room. Windows, right? the, Won't that be Connect for Windows that lets you do that? I think that inside that giant box, there's a little periscope that's going to, and next year, going to go zzz, emerge <laughs> and project it all up. around me. Yeah. Sure. It's already there. I think iFixit it would have find that if that was yeah, in maybe. there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the Imperial Probe droid or something. But I, yeah, I, it, right now, you know, the little room is kind of that vaporware thing. It's like, uh, yeah. it's more of a, a vision type thing, but I love the idea. I could see them doing it. I could see them doing it. Love the idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's going to project on, you know, tables yeah. and stuff, but it gives you that f peripheral vision feeling. Yeah. No, done right. It could be amazing. Oof. Uh, so what's the latest on the Google YouTube Microsoft thing? I immediately downloaded YouTube for Windows Phone, and, and you know I presume they're not going to delete it. So, so I'm I'll, happy. I'll give you the update from yesterday. Yeah, um, they Microsoft decided to to meet Google's demands part way because yesterday was supposedly the date Google said you have to either take it down or disable it because you you're violating our terms of service with your YouTube app. And so Microsoft instead refreshed the app and they took out the video download part, but they left in the no ads and they continue to say, the reason we're doing that is Google won't give us access to APIs that we need to embed ads in our app. So they're at a standoff again now, uh, basically. <laughs> And neither side is saying what's next. No one's saying if they're going to take legal action. Google's not. Google's not even commenting on what Microsoft did yesterday at this point. So I we don't really know. Bomber what the should go um, on stage and say, "What's with all this negativity?" Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like dealing with North Korea, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, I, I, once again, on the last uh, Windows update, half of the bugs were found by Google employees. Uh, Google Engineer has released a bug, not a huge flaw, it's a zero-day exploit, but requires access to the hardware, and says, oh, I just can't deal with Microsoft, I'm just going to release it to the world. Um, that is always the right way to do, and oh, the right boy. thing to do, and by the way, uh, don't be evil, don't be evil. Yeah. You know, don't be evil, it suggests many things to many people, but I think it also involves taking the high road with stuff like this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, venting your personal frustrations with the company while um, potentially subjecting users to a security vulnerability is... That's not cool. Uh, it does not fall into the don't That's do not evil. Cool. That's not cool. Yeah. And, and a lot of other researchers, including Sophos, say, no, we have no trouble working with Microsoft. When, we've, when we find a flaw, we give it to them. I uh, mean, actual security researchers have no problem working with Microsoft? Yeah, this guy, uh, the security engineer <laughs> at Google says, uh, yeah. Microsoft treats outside researchers with, quote, great hostility. Mm. Um, mm. Now, Maybe does, they just treat him with great hostility. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You know? and, and by the way, I'm starting to understand why. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it could be. You know, it's really how you come to them, right? If you say, "Hey, if you guys don't fix this right now, I'm going to release this," that's not going to be uh, taken with. You know. Yeah. <laughs> See, when people call me like that Kindly. on the phone, I, t I ask them if they'll hold on a second, and then they just put the phone on the table and go back to what I was doing. <laughs> and they can hear you in the background. And they can hear me doing stuff, <laughs> clunking around. Yeah. Yep. He says, I don't have much free time to work on silly Microsoft code, so I'm looking for ideas on how to fix the final obstacle for exploitation. <laughs> yeah, this guy does sound like he's kind of snotty. So mm. Things aren't that happy between Microsoft and Google. No, as but I don't, this is just a, a guy at Google. I don't know if I would blame Google for this. No, I know. It, it's true. Kind of bad timing on his part, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe you want to think of the larger implications. Both companies yeah. are sitting there trying to take the high road. What do you think of that new HP uh, Ultrabook with a super high-res display? I'm looking forward to that. Did you see that? L yeah. No, I... This is I the 4K display or the whatever crazy yeah, resolution. Super high-res. It's higher they than... They announced me. like eight. Eight new Windows 8 PCs today or something, right? Yeah. What, what, what are those? They're not coming out until later in the year, though, right? No, they're waiting uh, for Haswell. So, But it, it'll be soon. It, has, it won't be too long. It, yeah, they were saying May and June is yeah. for some of them. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, yeah. I thought it was September. Well, because Lenovo has shown this kind of super high res. Was it Lenovo or Samsung? Samsung showed the super so. high res, same same resolution. Uh, but this was one that H, HP is going to do. Mm. I'm not a fan of HP laptops. I know you like them a little bit, but I no, am. No, I I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly because of the junkware and stuff, but um, this one is, whoa. I, honestly, <laughs> HP and Dell both are companies that make really good desktop computers. Right. Um, but when it comes to laptops, I, I do look elsewhere. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is tempting. This is, uh, I think this is one of the envies. It's going to be. Uh, can you throw what key is a, a way to throw this up on the screen? Yeah, let me, let me see if I can find the uh, story. Um, yeah, on the win um, blogs.windows.com, um, there's a new post about all the different models today, I think. Okay. All right. I actually yeah. didn't, I didn't see it. I just sort of saw the headline and I assume this is for later in the year. Yeah. Well, it's funny because some of the models are coming out soon. Um, some are going to have Haswell and some of those we don't have dates for. So it's what I a read said they were waiting for Haswell on this one. As soon as it was available, they would they would release this. They, they got to get rid of the name Pavilion. Pavilion. I always think Packard Bell when I hear that. For some yeah, reason. this is not a pavilion. It's an NV Touch Smart. Yeah. Um, here's the uh, Mashable story on it. Okay. Um, it's a 14. So it's a MacBook Air. That's nice. Yeah, it's a MacBook Air, 14 inches. <laughs> get ready for this. 3,200 by 1,800 on a 14-inch yeah. screen. Mm. The Windows desktop is going to be awesome on this computer. <laughs> now, Windows is smart <laughs> enough This to is going to be what the uh, uh, the MV, or what do you call it, the uh, Motor Vehicle Division uses for eye tests. <sighs> Read me the icon uh, name, please, on this. Mm -hmm. uh Windows is smart enough, isn't it, to adjust the DPI on something like this? That's hilarious. Right? No, no, <laughs> not yet. I, I, I think it's getting. Oh, that would be bad because uh, some, uh, some of this resolution, the icons are going to be kind of. Well, that's what it, they're going to be. Yeah, it's yeah. going to look like an eight. Yeah. Um. So they're waiting. It says the NV Touch Smart 14 will be Haswell based, uh, but I got the impression that it would, and it sports a, oh, get ready for this, metallic finish. That means it's plastic, kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, yes. That's a, <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's code for it's plastic. Are you suggesting that polycarbonate is not something? I'm sorry. Cool? I'm sorry. What did I say? Polycarbonate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, I, 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 for one, love super high-res displays of all kinds. I, I just love it. Sure. So Metro will do fine. It's the desktop that will be a problem with that res, but uh, I'm sure they'll, <laughs> they'll come up with something in blue. And we have some blues clues. First, though, um, the new Microsoft ad. There's have a couple. Well, I saw the ad against the uh, iPad. Have you seen that one? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the one the we're one. talking about. Right. I think this is a very effective ad. You know, some say not. It's a. It's an who, interesting. Who would say? Who would say that? Who would um, dare say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. This ad is great. This is look. Look, the Scruggle stuff. I get it. If you don't like that, this one. Like, really? Come on. This is a great ad. Um, all right. Let me play it for everybody, and you can all be the judge. This will be another way we can get pulled right from the internet. In, no. in magic time. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Microsoft wants this one out there. I would think so. I don't know. So here it is. So they're showing a uh, RT. Sorry, I don't update like that. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. No, you got to put this on the screen. One thing oh, it's not on the screen. Oh, my apologies. No. I guess I pushed the wrong button. Let me restart this thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Restart. It's also, we, it's also we should note, yeah. not a Surface. It's an Asus Windows 8 tablet. It's oh, this not is Windows 8. It's not an RT. Right. No, it's but they, it's they talk Windows. about pricing is four ninety nine. Yep. Right. It's from Asus. <laughs> this is four ninety nine. This this thing. All right. Windows eight. Sorry, I don't update like that. We're talking about the updating tiles, I guess. I'm sorry. I can Snap. only do one thing at a time. I guess PowerPoint isn't one of those things. <laughs> Should we just play chopsticks? <laughs> Because this is, of course, the classic iPad ad. That's right. Like iPad six ninety nine for sixty four gigs. Windows eight tablet four ninety nine. Four forty nine. Four forty nine for sixty four gigs. I think the ad is compelling. I mean, the price is compelling. Uh, well, I, but either way, they're going head to head with features. I actually think that's yeah. smart. You know. Why yeah, don't you are, like the ad, Leo? I'm uh, curious. Well, the article I read, and I'm trying to remember where it was. Pointed out. Uh, I'm sure it was Apple something dot com. No, 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 no. <laughs> pointed out that. Um, yeah. yeah, fine. If you if you want on your tablet, if you want to have multiple windows open at once and you want to update your PowerPoint presentations, fine. But that's probably not why people buy an iPad. And the kind of intuitive user interface of the iPad is really what they're showing with chopsticks. And that's the that's why Apple puts mm -hmm. in the ads is the, the intuitive user interface. is the very simple <laughs> user interface. And so I guess I think the um, I think so, the the question is. Uh, who this is aimed at. And if it's aimed at an office productivity person or somebody who's very price sensitive... Uh, well, I think there are people... By the way, obviously the iPad's very successful. It is very simple, as you say. 
Um, I think there's a big market, though, for a, a device that's more sophisticated, that can do more. And I think that's the point that, you know, simple isn't always better. Simple doesn't equal better. Simple sometimes is how we describe someone who's a little off, too. I mean, you know, <laughs> simple can be a negative. Right. Um, that's a good point. So, that's you know, I just, just throwing that out there. Let's not forget that. Um, yeah. Obviously, something that can do more is also more complex. I mean, that's fair as well. Certainly, Windows 8 is way more complex. It was uh, a Huffington Post uh, article. Windows mm -hmm. 8 tablet app, Microsoft tries and fails to beat Apple and its own game. Uh, I, by the way, that opinion is very isolated. I think most people who view this will say, good for them. I, I, I as an Apple fan, may not want a Windows 8 tablet, but this is a good ad. Well, they do, because, they do use the Siri voice, and uh, that is something right. that actually the Apple does do that Windows 8 does not do. Yep. And more, was, more, but more to the point, I mean, these, uh, these iPad ads are on TV incessantly. No, no, I think it's a good ad. If you're Microsoft, yeah. this is the best you could possibly do. I, I saw Which people saying, it's oh, but it's not 100% accurate. And I'm like, and we're the PC versus Mac ads. Right. <laughs> They're ads. Where, where right? is it inaccurate? I don't, is it inaccurate? No, one person said, you know what? You can't run PowerPoint on because the Because Microsoft iPad. doesn't make it. That's what they said. Right. And I'm like, right. <laughs> right. That's that's a selling point for them. Mm -hmm. of their Bill Gates tablets. said the same thing on 60 Minutes. Uh, right. Yeah. And I think someday Microsoft will have PowerPoint for the iPad. But not too oh. soon. <laughs> Not too soon, but uh, we don't really know for sure. But I, I just think it's funny. People sometimes forget ads are meant to just be ads, right? They're not meant to be accurate. I How know, many ads I, are I accurate? I None. Know. <laughs> People, those, those fun Samsung ads where like, you know, they're at the college graduation or the, the Nokia Windows phone ad or whatever it is where, you know, people are getting in a fight and the two, you know, Nokia users are sitting in the middle. People will view something like that. And instead of laughing and saying, you know, it's really funny, they'll say, well, I don't understand. This doesn't talk about any of the features. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be an infomercial. Sometimes commercials are just about brand building and good feelings and making you have a good, you know, you can just, it can just be funny. You know, by the way, horses in a Budweiser ad don't actually cook a, <laughs> cook a football through an upright. That doesn't have to be realistic. It's still funny. It's okay. You know? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I think it probably persuades the believers. The real question is, or doesn't persuade the believers, does it convert yeah. anybody? Right. Because right? that's what it needs to do. But I, right. on that note, I actually think this is pretty effective. Again, I'm not saying people have now rushing out with their credit cards to buy, you know, some stupid Asus tablet. But I, I think it's effective in that it takes on Apple on their own turf. The thing that's most effective is the price at the end. And that's that was the yeah, right place to put that. that. Is. That's like And shows they're both 64 gig because a lot of people say, yeah, but it's a different amount of RAM. And it no, this is mm -hmm. two 64 gig tablets, right? Okay. I will point out that a 64 gig Surface Pro costs $999. But, you know, whatever. Right. That's why it's not uh, the Surface in that ad. <laughs> right. You know, right. Yeah. Yep. Although, by the way, a, a 64 gig Surface RT uh, is mm -hmm. still less expensive than the iPad. Uh, wait, no. Is or it, is it if you add the keyboard into, is it still? Yeah. I got. Same. I got to wonder though if you had a choice between being one of the two companies in that ad, Apple or Asus, mm -hmm. which would you pick? Asus. Well. That, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? I would. <laughs> okay, I'm curious. <laughs> what, Why, uh, Mary Joe? Why? <laughs> Because I think if you have the two things side by side, you see this nice, colorful, bright Not which screen. one would you buy. Which one would you want to be? Oh. Like the company, in other words. Which, which yeah. company? Well, oh, that's the a little company. unfair. I mean, oh. obviously, Apple I thought you is, meant which one would you choose. Apple Sorry. is a financial juggernaut. It doesn't really mean, you know, in other words, <laughs> yeah. I could put obviously. up with the fact that this company makes really crappy products. They make so much money. Who cares? I mean, but that's. But they don't you know, make really crappy products. No. Really. Let's, they don't. let's be honest. They don't. I liked, I liked my, my iPad a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's interesting. It, it, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just watching it again. I I but you know what? You know what? Though I think if you're somebody who ha has only seen the dancing surface commercials and not had a chance it's, to this see, this is better the than tablets. the dancing surface. Very way better. Much better. And and very much. Yeah. By the way, Microsoft did a new ad this week too for the Surface um, that takes yeah. away the dancing. Yay! And it talks right. about the features. <laughs> it's the tablet that runs Office. You know, smart. Yeah. No, that's this. why this ad is a good ad. It yeah. is very feature focused. Yeah. It is. And by the way, that addresses that complaint. I mean, for as I said, over the past few months, there have been different ads for, you know, the phone and also on the Windows side, the guys tapping the pen on the table, which right. makes me want to buy that thing. Um, I know. I you know this, one, this, this is so stupid. Uh, this one at least addresses those concerns where, yeah, like, they don't even show the point of it and now they now they and are and the tagline is does less talking more work 
which I think is is a genuine that that's going to persuade somebody who's lo who's looking for a productivity tool. And uh, did Mary Jo just lose her power? What happened over there? No. She's no, sorry. thinking. <laughs> We're yeah, having a, um, a very, very bad storm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> dear, say, you, dear, you, dear, just, dear. you just went so dark. Yeah, it's it's it like was... a monsoon outside right now. <laughs> Holy cow. All right. Yeah. Well, and thundering, lightning. So, yeah. What floor Sorry. are you on? 16. Oh, my God. I hope you're going to be okay. I'm okay. <laughs> well, I mean, like the color on your side of the screen literally went down. Got dark. Half, by half, yeah. 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 I just, I'm trying to can keep you, it light. Can you stick your camera out the window? <laughs> uh yeah, I could try. Ready? Yeah. Can you guys see that or too far? Oh, no, yeah. Wow, look at that. This is <laughs> kind of fun. It's like being in New York. <laughs> yeah, it's pouring down like cats and dogs. That is cool. Oh. That is cool. Uh, let's see. It's not here yet. <laughs> it will, though, right? Because you're just up, oh, the, yeah. up the road yeah. a piece. Yeah. Let's take a break and uh, come back with more of Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley, talking about Windows Blues Clues, our regular repeating segment coming up in just a moment. Uh, and, of course, tips, picks, and all of that stuff. But first, a word from our friends at Shutterstock.com. Shutterstock is where I go. Uh, every Now, I've, I've started uh, blogging every day. I haven't done it yet today. But uh, one of the things that kind of uh, inspired me to do this was the fact that I've got a great Shutterstock subscription, a 25-image-a-day subscription, and I want to use the images. And what's great about Shutterstock is it kind of inspires you. I want you to play with this. You don't need to pay for anything. It's free to have an account. Create an account at Shutterstock.com, and you could start playing with the search tools and start seeing what Shutterstock could do. Let me log into my Shutterstock account, and I can show you uh, how fun Shutterstock is. There are 20 million images uh, on uh, Shutterstock, photos, illustrations, vectors, video clips, with 10,000 new ones each day. They're gorgeous. They're uh, all royalty-free, and they have a variety of ways you can do it. I mean, some of these are just really beautiful artwork. Uh, that you might want to put in your blog, right? But see, I start browsing through these. They have a, once you have set up the account, the free account, you could create a um, a Shutterstock. Uh, ooh, pretty a Shutterstock light table, and kind of copy uh, things over to it. They call them light boxes, and share them with other people too. You could do great searches uh, on Shutterstock.com. Let me go back, and uh, let's search for. Let's see, Doctor Pizza was on. Let's search for pizza. And, um, oh, this is going to make me hungry. Look at all the different people. But let's say I want, uh, you could say happy pizza. You could say, I don't know if sad pizza would get me anything. You could search for pizza ingredients, pizza delivery, pizza icon, pizza dough, pizza oven. You can then narrow it down with the color wheel. That is so awesome. Let's you choose different colors. This is a really great resource. Now, I have, uh, there are different packages. You can buy a individual image packages or what I have which is a monthly subscription I have the standard uh, subscription that's 25 images a day so for a blogger for um, a newspaper for a magazine for anybody who needs great royalty free images there's a ton on Shutterstock.com and it's very affordable and I want you to give it a try Shutterstock.com sign up today and if you use our offer code Windows 5 on your purchase you'll be getting a, a is that right? 30% discount. Wow. A 30% discount on your first purchase. So use the offer code WINDOWS5 and then do a subscription. Get 30% off. Why not? That's what I did. Shutterstock.com. 30% off on new accounts when you use our offer code WINDOWS and the number 5 for May, the fifth month of the year. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. We're talking about Windows and it's time for Blues Clues. More about the next version of Windows, the free version of Windows, thank goodness, coming out uh, in the fall. <laughs> yes. Um, so my, I have a blues clue for this week, which is about Bing, mm. um, interestingly. So, we, you know, we've, we've heard kind of some vague talk up till now that Microsoft was going to have some new things going on with Bing in Windows Blue. And when the builds have leaked of this, nobody could really try it out because um, that part's not enabled yet. And only people who are using Blue inside Microsoft on the corporate network can see these features. But I've been talking to a couple of my sources, and um, one of them said, 
we're going to be really surprised about how the search experience in Windows changes when, with Windows Blue. Because right now when you search, you know, you just start typing anywhere to search. You have to kind of hunt around sometimes inside of apps or settings or mail to figure out like where, where is this thing that I'm searching for? It's not, it's not really that simple a search experience. But what I hear could be happening with Blue is Microsoft's going to make it so you start typing something. And because of some of the work that the Bing team has done around natural language querying and uh, machine learning technologies that they're taking advantage of, it'll actually kind of guide you to what it thinks you're searching for. So if you're searching for something that's likely in your mail, it's going to take you to your mail so you can look for it there. Um, this would be awesome, I think, because so many people kind of get lost in search right now. Like they're trying to find, say, Windows Update, and they don't know they need to search under settings for that when they're searching. Um, so so if this does happen, this will be really amazing um, because that's how search should work when all you have to do is type. It should just kind of take you to where you are most likely to be going. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, Leo, if you noticed, but... Um, when they announced the uh, Xbox One this week, they talked about Bing a little bit. And they said, uh, they didn't actually say this was Bing, but you know, when you're doing these searches with Connect and you're saying, for example, Snap, i.e. In, on uh, Xbox, what's actually making that happen in the background is Bing. And it's, it's the Connect uh, oh, voice capabilities. Oh, and Bing is what's figuring out what you mean when you're saying that and actually making the correct apps open up. Uh, because it's taking you to those apps. Right. Do what I say, not what I mean. Or do what I mean, yeah. not what I say. Yeah. I, I really like, and that is something Microsoft has an advantage with because they have They have not, a really big They advantage. have search, but they have the operating system too. Exactly. So they can do both, yeah. Right. And, you know, every time people talk about Bing, they're like, oh, it's a web search engine. It's not doing that well. They're fighting Google. It's a never-ending battle. But I think people forget the other thing that Bing is turning into for Microsoft as a service. Is a vo and voice they're service. taking advantage of it as yeah. a service. The voice part, the natural language uh, recognition, um, the other things that Microsoft's being able to take advantage of because of some of the machine learning techniques they have just from all the indexing that they do through Bing. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, with Windows Blue, not just the regular stuff everybody's talking about, but also this whole search, uh, new search capabilities that may be coming as right. part of the op update this fall. We'll have to see how well it works. I'm not sure how it would know right. that I need to open email. If, uh, right. I know. I'm, I'm curious how that's going to work, too. Yeah. And it might not be that explicit, but it sounds like it's going to definitely make search uh, much easier to navigate and figure out, which will be right. a, a, a big positive, I think. Well, and I think Google has shown that you can do natural language and you could start putting some intelligence into your search results. And I think that that is something Microsoft absolutely needs to do with Bing because that's, you know, yeah. it's, it's becoming... HAL 9000. It's becoming, you know, as yeah. Google kept saying, the Star Trek computer, you know, the one you talk to. Yeah. It's not just search. It's like, do something for me. And search is just exactly. a part of that. Right. Yep. And, you know, the, the other thing the Bing team's doing too, which uh, we've mentioned on the show before, is they're also building apps, right? They built the travel app and the news yeah, app and the sports app. Yeah. And they, they're building more apps. I heard they might build like a whole, maybe like six, seven more apps for Blue. Um, and we've seen a couple of them in the leaked builds. I think that... Uh, sound recorder thing and the um, alarms is probably both uh, are probably both things that the Bing team built. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Bing is a service. Yeah. Everything's going to be a service later. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. My computer pretty soon I won't literally not joking but no, yeah. it yeah. is. No, it's everything's as. Yeah, you just need the computer to run the services. Yeah, it's a thin it's <laughs> a know? thin client. We're back to the days of yeah. thin clients. Yep. Sure. Uh, speaking of which, Windows Server might be called Azure. We've heard this. Have we heard this before? Is this new? Paul's well, idea. No, I mean, I, I, I sort of, yeah, I go down a little rabbit hole in this one. Um, you know, last year, Microsoft announced that it was rethinking its, the way it thinks about itself. You know, it, it's a devices and services company. A lot of people who look at Microsoft right now, or, you know, a year ago certainly would say, no, you're not. You're a software company. You know, that doesn't make any sense. But um, I think when you look at the way Microsoft is going, and Office 365 is absolutely a product that sets the stage for this, but Windows Azure is as well. Um, they're moving first their traditional server products to services. That's been spectacularly successful. In fact, in fact, I think it's the unheralded success, you know, tech success story of the past decade. Um, and they're increasingly doing it on the client side as well. And it's this notion of them being a, a devices and services company starts to make sense. Although I actually think they should have said services and devices because 
I think it's more like 75% <laughs> services and 25% devices. Um, but I was a couple, starting a couple of weeks ago, I started looking at Azure again. Azure is something that has always confused me. It's in, as it's only grown in kind of scope and power, it, it has confused me more. And I sort of figured I need to get a handle on Azure and find out what's going on. And you can sign up for a free account um, for a fairly long period of time. They let you use all of the services, which would be very expensive in real life. You can run, you know, start up VMs. You can run web services. You can write app, mobile apps that run against Azure. You can do all this stuff. It's, it's really kind of amazing. And I had, I don't want to call it an epiphany because I'm so stupid for not realizing this more quickly, but they have basically replicated everything you can do locally as a service. And, and more is coming. You know, Mary Jo wrote about a, a possible Azure service um, for deploying PC desktops, you know, in the future. For example, I mean, it's, it's this kind of monster that's growing and growing and growing. And so it just sort of occurred to me, you know, I, I as a, an enthusiast or someone who writes about technology does things that are like what IT pros do in the real world. But I, you know, I deploy servers, I install software on them, I uh, sign into a domain, I do all this stuff. And I could do that locally using servers, using actual hardware, using actual machines. I can create VMs at great length and I can, you know, and great expense and I can do all that stuff. Or I could go to Azure and I could say, uh, I want a new VM. I want it to have this much memory. I want it to have this kind of storage. I want it to be running this operating system. And you click go and 10 seconds later, you're up and running on a VM. You connect to it over remote desktop, just like I would here, by the way. I mean, it doesn't matter if the machine's sitting behind me. I'm still going to use remote desktop to hit it. It's exactly the same experience, except that the, ex the actual setup of it is, uh, you know, uh, an order of magnitude easier when you go through Windows Azure. And it occurred to me, you know, as they move to more and more services that this is this is the future of the company. You know, that this is this is it, you know, that this is the mode and that I think they're going to uh, drag their customers, some of them kicking and screaming down this path um, where they de-emphasize on premises software and uh, emphasize services instead. And that in that new world, you know, maybe calling something Windows Azure doesn't make any sense. You know, maybe they should just call it Azure. Azure, Azure. Well, I mean, in the beginning, they had something called SQL Azure. And SQL right. Azure was renamed to Windows Azure SQL <laughs> Database, I think. It's the database, database, yeah. You know. um, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> you know, but, but, but that thing makes more, if you think about it, I mean, the, the real brand there is Azure. I mean, the brand is Azure. It's not Windows Azure. It's Azure. And then you get into some kind of sticky, you know, situation where it's like, you know, maybe the server thing shouldn't be called Windows Server. I mean, why, you know. Um, there, when Azure was first created, it was built on a modified version of Windows Server. Now Azure is running on a stock version of Hyper-V. There are Windows Azure learnings and, and functionality that have been pushed back into the on-premises servers. It's one of those kind of virtuous cycle kind of deals. I mean, we're almost getting to the point now where Windows Server is basically just an on-prem way to do Azure in a private cloud rather than a hosted version of Azure, which is some combination of public and private cloud. I, I kind of hope they do this. I, I haven't heard a rumor that they are, but um, it, right now they use the term cloud OS to talk about server and about yeah. Windows Azure. And I think that's super confusing. I don't know. I think I think just calling everything Azure in a way might make it easier. But I'm also curious because they love the Windows brand so much, you know, could you see them giving right. up Windows? That's the problem. Yeah. If they, right. Yeah. Right. Microsoft is in love with, win, with Windows to, <laughs> yeah. to a, an extent that is almost I think they're pretty attached. pathological. They're pretty yeah. attached. The idea of Windows yeah. and Office, they're pretty attached. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't say I really blame them. There are a lot of products with the name Windows on them that would have been better off without being called Windows. I think we can all agree that. Mm. Uh, Azure is one of them. <laughs> we got so. tips. We got uh, picks. But I think before we do that, we have a little time. Would you like to take some uh, questions? I think, I think there are probably a lot of questions from our uh, chat room about the... Xbox yes. One. I'd like to do that. So, chat room, yeah. if uh, you have a. Um... Or if you want to know about, you know, Hyper V. <laughs> yes. Or Don't all line up there. <laughs> or Hadoop. Uh, take them a minute or two to get to get that going because there's always this little lag between. Uh, is there a start button on Xbox One? Asks, confuse <laughs> I confuse me too. <laughs> <laughs> no. What is this? No start, is there no start button. Does it have a remote? I, I presume you could use. Uh, Actually, remember the original Xbox? You could buy a remote. You still can. can they have the 360. All right. Yeah. So yeah, presumably they will. I'll show it to you. 
Oh, Paul, has, Paul has one here. There it is. <laughs> yeah. It's a little more complicated than the original Xbox remote. Yeah, um, but it's about one-tenth as complicated as the typical Sony remote. Right. RAM, we know already, is uh, 8 gigs, right? Yep. And uh, it's a 8 As opposed eight to 5, processor. 12 megabytes, by the way, in a 360. It's a huge difference. Wow. Huge difference. But that, yeah, you probably need that with Hyper-V and all that stuff. How do you guys like the uh, Lumia, especially the 920? You both use 8Xs, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been using a 920 for a while, but go ahead, Mary Jo, I'm sorry. I like the 928. I thought it was a really nice phone. It was my first time spending any real quality time with the Lumia, but a little too heavy for me, unfortunately. Yeah, it's bulky, but I think, boy, this is, if you want a Windows phone, man, I'm impressed by this. It's a good it's one. It's a nice I, phone. Wow. I like the form factor of the 820. I wish that the 820 had the... 920's camera. That, to me, would be almost oh, perfect. the camera is so good on this um, thing. The camera is really nice, yeah. I'm just really happy. And, the, you know, they, the, the way they treat uh, camera apps is as filters built into the camera. Right. Uh, which well, the, but is that's, very see, smart. That's the, that's the brilliance of the uh, integration stuff, right? So, you know, on an on iPhone or perhaps on Android, I'm not really sure on Android, you know, you have to think, like, I want to take a picture using this app. You have to think of the name of the app. you got to right. go find it. When they call phone, these lenses, you, you know. They're just part of the camera app. Right. You know, they I mean they are actually separate apps, but the point is that you as a user just think I click the camera button, that's bring up the camera. That's where you are, so that's where it should and be. And then you right. go from there. And right. I think that's that just makes a lot of sense. Uh love live tiles. I mean, I, and I just uh, the other thing battery life and performance is really great. I mean, they've mm -hmm. you could tell because they've highly, you know, th they've really set a strong spec for this that these phones are all going to perform well. Um, yep. You know, the hardware is great. I, I do think that the uh, 928's OLED screen is is really beautiful. I know Mary mm -hmm. Jo agrees with me on that. Yep. And, yeah. Um, the camera is nice in the 928 as far as, like, low-light photography. It really does take a really nice shot at, in low light. It's incredible. Video is yeah. incredible. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is easily the best camera. And because it has a dedicated camera button, even when you're locked, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can turn on the camera and go right to it is great. Yeah. Just I could great. change anything about Windows Phone, by the way. It yeah. would be that stupid start bu I mean, the um, search button. I cannot tell you yeah. how many times I inadvertently find here. myself. Yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. look at the Bing, that Bing thing. I look at it, I mean, nine times out of ten, I, I, that's not what, what I want to be looking at. Right. Yeah. I hit it by mistake. But if or this I, were contextual search, if I could say, uh, oh, now I have to accept speech recognition service. Uh, open the email from Paul Therott, if it would, sure. you know, then we might be talking, right? So you can say open mail or whatever. Open you can do that, right? The, yeah. You can launch the app, you know. Yeah. You that, can do that. They're getting there. Is there, that there Tell Me? Things, that's the Tell Me service that's running? Yeah, yeah that is. You you can compose, um, uh, you know, text messages using the voice thing, which is pretty good. Yep. Um, you know, everybody it's, it's everybody does there. that it's, now, though, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, sure. uh, and that's the that's why I said if this had come out in 2009, it would mm -hmm. be huge. Um, right. But now they're playing catch up, unfortunately. Yep, and uh, that that's that's just a little problematic, I think. But you know, I've got I love the big little big and little tiles. You see, I have a mix of both. Um, you know, I can rearrange this as I choose, and it's it's just really great. I'm really, really impressed with this. Boy, the camera is good. Look at this picture. This is a good picture of me. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, I can't. Uh, there. Uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> just the farmer, farmer Leo. Sure. It's trying to crop it, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Anyway, can you use the Xbox One controller on a PC like the 360 controllers, <laughs> asks Explorer 7. So, I actually, I don't know how that thing connects to the device, right? In, um, they said the Wi-Fi they say wi Direct, didn't they? Yeah, so if that's what it is, then, then it not, no, not right now. Right. I mean, maybe there'll be a, a little... Am I wrong? Know, didn't they say Wi-Fi Direct? Well, it has Wi-Fi Direct. That's what I mean. I don't know if that's how the controller connects. Yeah. Right? It's not I clear if that's just that. for... Oh, they, okay, that's what I'm wondering. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. They said right, that. right out of the box, I would say no. But you know, there's no reason they couldn't change that or come up with a little clip-on wired deal like they have today right. for Windows. So we'll see. Is Wi-Fi Direct one way only? Because I mean, a lot, all Intel created it, and a lot of laptops have it built in. I actually don't know. I, uh, hmm. Windows 8.1 says Knight Rider 21 has built-in Wi-Fi Direct support. So if it's two, if it's two-way, then you you're set. Provided your hardware, you know, has a radio for it and all of that stuff. Uh, well, the current Xbox 360 controller, you have to have a dongle uh, yep. to do it on a. Uh, so you, this would maybe be dongleless. <laughs> That's always the goal. Always Woo! good to get rid of the dongle. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. 
You got your dongle in my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Why AMD? We don't know it was AMD, right? But we presume it's uh, AMD. No, we do. We do. They said yeah, that. Yeah, it, it is. Okay. Yep. Uh, why did both Intel and Sony, I mean, uh, Microsoft and Sony choose AMD over Intel? That's a good question. I, mm. is it, it seemed perhaps, to me like AMD was falling behind and I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Must be that they, must be they're cranking them out or something. There must be a specific. It, it might be this, for whatever reason, they're making something that makes this appealing to the console market. Right. Uh, that these parts that are in the PS4 and the Xbox are very close. That they must make a part specifically for this and yeah. presumably, it's a system on a chip that includes. They they GPUs. literally said system on a chip. Yeah, so so, it's, yeah. so that's the th that's why because you've got the well, ATI that's, GPU. This, this, yeah, the system yeah. on the chip thing is what enables those power states, the Windows right. eight style power right. states, right. where it's right. off but it's not really off. And well, Haswell's doing that too. Basically. Haswell's doing that right. too. Isn't this yes. um, Jaguar? The architecture code, code name Jaguar from AMD is is that what the system on the chip is? I don't know. Thinking that's what it is. I don't know. I hope it's the same as the Atari Jaguar. Any news <laughs> about uh, Bluetooth 4 coming to the Windows Phone platform? Do you know about that? No, that would require the Windows Phone people to actually talk. Um, so, <laughs> As far as we know on Windows Phone, the updates that we're getting in 2013, all these GDR things, they're fairly minor features. Um, so people shouldn't be holding their breath like GDR2 or GDR3 brings some big thing to the platform. Windows Phone users have learned not to hold their breath. I think we don't need to worry about that. Yeah. Uh, so Windows Phone Blue is probably where the bigger features start showing up, like possibly VPN, possibly a notification center, things like that. Um, and that could be either very late this year or more likely early next year. All right. Paul Thorat, Mary hey, Jo Foley. I like doing this. We're going to make sure we get these in every time. I love having the questions, and you guys are so good at answering them. Uh, but we are going to take a break so we can come back and uh, do our uh, picks of the week in just a moment. First, a word from our friends at Carbonite Online Backup, Carbonite.com. If you don't have a good backup strategy, you're pretty much guaranteeing you're going to lose data because hard drives fail, laptops get lost or stolen, uh, disasters happen. You know, fire, flood, tornado. And uh, if there's something on your hard drive you don't want to lose, you better have a good backup solution. In fact, you better have a solution that isn't just sitting there next to your computer. You better have a solution to the cloud, especially for a laptop. That's where Carbonite is so great. If you go to Carbonite.com, you'll see they have a number of plans designed for a variety of situations. Of course, there's the really great, the one we talk about all the time, $59 a year for everything on a computer. That's their home version, Mac or Windows. Uh, but there are also... Uh, different additions for people who want to back up external hard drives, for instance, uh, or have mirror backups uh, for people who want to get the courier recovery service where they come and they deliver you a hard drive with your data on it. I really like that. There's a HIPAA compliant business solution. Uh, these are all fixed rate. You pay one price, one flat rate per computer per year, for virtually unlimited storage for most of the plans, certainly the basic uh, home plans, all the home plans. I want you to try it today. Visit Carbonite.com. Pick your plan. Uh, you could try it free for two weeks. Just uh, click Download Free Trial Now, and you got it. But do use our offer code when you do this so that you'll get the uh, two months free with purchase. That's the, that's the way to go. So offer code, when they ask you, is Windows. W, it's simple to remember. Just put that offer code right in here, W-I-N-D-O-W-S. That way you'll get two weeks free, no credit card needed, and two months free with purchase. $59 a year for everything on that laptop or desktop. It's real peace of mind protection. Automatic, continuous, encrypted cloud backup. Carbonite.com. Try it free today. Make sure you use that offer code Windows. Paul and Mary Jo will thank you. Time for our uh, tips and tools and picks of the week. Let's start with your tip of the week, Mr. Thorat. What is my tip of the week? Oh, it says <laughs> pick the right cloud <laughs> services for sharing and managing photos. And I agree. Right. I agree. This Boy, stuff is tough. Changed. You know, uh, music services are even tougher because that stuff seems to change all the time. But for whatever reason, in the past two weeks, uh, Microsoft with SkyDrive, Google with Google Plus Photos, and Yahoo with Flickr all announced updates of varying degrees to their kind of consumer-oriented uh, photo sharing and managing services, right? So, um, you know, SkyDrive has a new photos view that's built in uh, to the main web interface, which is actually pretty nice. And um, 
you know, I don't know. I don't know if anyone actually shares photos over SkyDrive a lot. I think that's kind of the, the maybe this the small issue with it that um, it, it's not a bad place to store photos, and certainly you can get a lot of storage. But um, you know, it's not attached directly to something like a Facebook or some normal way that you know people might um, share photos. Um, Flickr is the Flickr one's a big deal. Flickr added a terabyte, terabyte of free storage, yeah, for free, for free users, right? Yeah. So I actually pay for a Flickr Pro uh, subscription. So you're going to keep yours, got... right? See, because they they're trying to encourage us to go to the free one. Well, Flickr Pro also has no ads, right? There are other advantages. So I, I and I by the way, I they didn't uh, announce anything for us at this time, but I expect over time they'll be. Do you think Flickr yeah. is the best way to go? Uh, I mean, a terabyte's more than anybody's giving you for free. Yeah. So the uh, yeah, yes and no. So Flickr has kind of sat there unchanged for a while. I, one of the issues I have to think about with any of this stuff is I use Windows, and so how do I get photos from Windows to this service fairly right. automatic? There's no Flickr app on Windows. Uh, well, no, there is. There's an upload app. It's you know, it's been sitting there for. It, I think it was written in Visual Basic three. It's been kind of you know, it's yeah. It's not really that bad, but it's, it's you know, it's it's bad. Um, the terabyte of storage is very interesting. I don't need that much storage, for one thing. I mean, maybe someday I will, but um, I don't know. The, the I probably would use Flickr if I didn't already have 90% of every digital photo I've ever taken in Google. And uh, the one thing, you know, and I'm, I'm never going to use Google Plus the way Google wants me to, but as a photo kind of a backup service, Actually, Google's pretty good. Um, they give you lots of storage. You can keep buying more and more as you need it. The prices are reasonable. They come down all the time, or, or at least the storage allotments go up. Um, and they've always done a really good job with that. If I, if I were starting over, I would go with Flickr uh, solely uh, for that kind of thing. But because I have so much in Google, um, I'll probably continue using that for just for that kind of backup purpose. And Google has these new things with the Google Plus with the uh, auto awesome and stuff that are very, I think some of this stuff is pretty cool. I need to look at that. But I mean, you know, each one of these things also has integration with various uh, mobile devices that, you know, is a plus or minus depending on what you're using. Um, you know, my uh, Windows phone photos automatically are backed up to SkyDrive, you know, and that's right. fine. Right, and I, I leave that on. I like that feature. Yep, there's yep. no reason not to yep. have that. Yep. Um, but I like to have all my photos in one place, too. And so uh, I think it uh, ultimately because you can't go past 100 gigs on, you know, 100, whatever it's, 125, 150 gigs on SkyDrive that um, it's amazing. That's not, it's not a great choice <laughs> you know, for... The deal on storage has gotten so I, amazing. Uh, yeah, it and really has. <laughs> as Flickr Pro users, we, of course, you can't get a Pro account anymore, but we we get unlimited, right? Flickr Pro, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it Or is it... Yeah. Is it unlimited? Okay, yeah, okay. unlimited. Yeah. But they're for some reason they're trying to get everybody to switch. I guess because they don't. They're not going to offer Pro anymore. So. Oh, they're not. No. We. So no, in, well, in, so we're grandfathered <laughs> in. So it will okay. continue to renew forever. I'm in a weird spot on everything. So check this out. So that's funny. I did not know that. So, in all, every one of these services I just mentioned, SkyDrive, Flickr, and Google Plus Photos, which used to be Picasa Web. I am I am actually in a grandfathered plan in all of them. So <laughs> Me too. I, I, I have it's 25 good to be gigs old. of SkyDrive storage because <laughs> I had that so long ago. I have Sky yeah Flickr Pro, which I've had for years. On the Google thing, I'm on a uh, I think it's a 200 gigabyte plan. I'd have to look that one up. I can't remember how much it is, but I'm on a it's a grandfathered plan, so I pay a certain amount. I actually get twice as much storage as, as I would get if I was on a new plan. So I, it's kind of. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> That's what you get. That's what we get. We get some reward for being here for a long, long time. We're, yep. we're grandfathered this is like, this in. Is like the, this is like a virtual version of a double ARP card or something. <laughs> you know? That's my motto. I'm grandfathered in. It's four o'clock. It's time for dinner. Yeah. You heard bird special at Denny's. Come on, kids. Oh, no. Sorry. You're not allowed. That is tough. Yep. Nothing for you. That's funny. I never, I never, I never made that connection. Yeah, because we got more SkyDrive when they uh, changed yeah, it, didn't no, we? No, that's and, uh, that's vaguely depressing. Yeah, I want to pay more. I'm not that old. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm thrilled about? I get a terabyte of Google Drive because I've got a Pixel. Yeah, there you go. You're never going to use a terabyte of anything, are you? No, I'm never use a Pixel either. But. You got to upload it or a Pixel <laughs> for that matter. You got to upload yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Mary Jo Foley, it's time for... Our, oh, no, I'm sorry. We got the SharePoint uh, pick of the oh, week here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's I, not even me. So that's not even me. you. That's what threw and me. He saw SharePoint. He got all excited. Um, <laughs> so, ooh, 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 ooh. 
I just you know, God, I call. I always do that. It's sorry, it's called SkyDrive Pro. I always yeah. do that. It's not I SharePoint just, Pro. I, it's no, SkyDrive Sky Pro. So, so uh, Microsoft in its SharePoint uh, 2013 and in SharePoint Online and Office 365, the business versions. Um, has a has renamed or rebranded their document library for individuals um, from like my site to SkyDrive Pro. And as with the consumer SkyDrive service, you can sync that to your PC and just work with it in the file system, right? Instead of having a special app that lets you access those files, which is how they used to do it. Um, the problem was until this week, you had to get, it came with Office, so if you don't have Office 2013, you, there was no way for you to sync from SkyDrive Pro down to your PC. And so now with the standalone release of the SkyDrive Pro client, uh, anyone with Windows, I think it's Vista 7 and 8, can do this synchronization automatically, just as you can do with SkyDrive, uh, with the SkyDrive uh, desktop application. So it's a free app, obviously. Um, Microsoft says, and I wrote, that it only works with SharePoint 2013 and SharePoint Online and Office 365, but actually it works with 2010 as well. So if you're using an older version of SharePoint, you can still use this. This is a great way to do sync. I mean, if you have anyone who's used the SkyDrive sync app, which works a lot like Dropbox or, you know, the old live mesh stuff, um, this is kind of the way to go. So there's a, a version for everybody now. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> even us old timers, our, grand, <laughs> our grandfathers, we got a, we got a yeah. version too. Mary Jo Foley, Horton Works, yep. is back <laughs> with Hadoop. Yes. My enterprise pick of the week has Hadoop in the name, so you know it is mine, of course. Yes. Uh, Horton Works came out this week with version 1.1 of the Horton Works data platform. And so this is the final version of the, well, I shouldn't say final, the first uh, gold version of H their Hadoop implementation for Windows. This is a big deal. It's open source. It's Apache Hadoop. Um, and it's also the foundation for what Microsoft is doing with its own implementations of Hadoop that it's working on with Hortonworks. So this had to come out first. HTTP for Windows came, came out this week, clearing the way now for HD Insight on Azure and HD Insight on Windows Server. And those are Microsoft's implementations of Hadoop. So uh, if you don't want to wait for that or you want to start without all the integration of the Microsoft components and you need Hadoop for Windows, you can go get HDP 1.1 from Hortonworks website as of this week. Very cool. Hadoop. Hadoop. Mm. And uh, I guess you've got a confirmation. Yes. So this is our rumor of the week. Um, and... Some people may think this was already a done deal, but I heard as of this week from a, a very good source of mine on Windows Blue that the start button and boot straight to desktop options are both now in the builds inside Microsoft of Windows Blue. So this is really coming. Everybody who was kind of like, they might do it. I want to tell them not to do it. It's too late. It's in there. It's in the milestone preview build. The, the most recent milestone preview builds in Redmond, I hear. So yes, it's a rumor, but I'm feeling very confident. In fact, someone can track core me on this, that the start <laughs> button and the boot to desktop options are going to be in the preview build and, and that everybody boot to gets. That's yes, amazing. and boot straight to desktop as an option. Not as just well. for off not just for the business pro nope. user, for but all for all versions. All Listening versions. Listening to customers. Listening. Yay, listening, listening to customers. Listening good. Listening real good. Yep. That's a rumor of the week, but I, I feel very strongly that it's a good one. Awesome. And I guess it wouldn't be Windows Weekly <laughs> without a beer pick of the week. It would not. Yes. My beer pick of the week comes from Seattle this week because I haven't done one from Seattle lately. And um, it's from an awesome brewery in Seattle called Elysian Brewing. And their beers are available all over the U.S., uh, their beer that I drank this past week was called Super Fuzz. Ooh. It was really good. It's a um, pale ale, but it, it's flavored with blood orange. Ooh, I love blood orange. Did you ever have a blood orange margarita? This is the Ooh, beer equivalent. It's red. <laughs> red. Is the beer red too? It's very dark orange, yeah. um, and it, but it tastes like a really awesome pale ale with just a tinge of blood orange. It, it's a very, very good beer. And the best label ever. 
I know the label is really awesome. <laughs> Super fun. I got to have it on tap. I had it on tap, so it was very fresh. But um, I've heard in the bottle it's excellent as well. Ah, excellent, excellent, excellent. Super fuzz blood orange pale from Elysian Brewing Company. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you, Paul Thorat. Thank you all for being here. Windows Weekly has come to a close, but fear not. We'll have another edition next Thursday and every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on twit.tv. But a word. Because of the Build Conference, Juneteenth, uh, <laughs> we will be uh, doing our show on Friday. Was that June 11th we'll be doing it? June. No, June uh, yeah, 28th. 29th or 28th. Yeah. Oh, it's the end of June. That's right. Yeah, very last week of June. End of June. 28th, yeah. All right. So Friday, and we think it's going to be 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time uh, on that Friday. And we're going to have beer. And if you are here for Build, find your, wake your way up to Petaluma. Let's have a big yeah. crowd here. We'll feed you all and we'll drink, make you drink, drunk. That would be so great. Drink, that would be drink. really Will there be beanbag chairs? I'm interested in making a <laughs> fort of some kind. There will be two, but they're large. <laughs> um, and between you and Raphael, I'm sure you'll find a way to make a fort. We also have Minecraft blocks, human-sized Minecraft blocks. There you go. So I'm sure you'll be able oh, to do that. Can we give a shout out for our Windows Weekly tweet up at TechEd too? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so June, if you're at Tech Ed in New Orleans, on June 3rd, we're having a Windows Weekly tweet up. It's at a place called the Avenue Pub. Tons of great craft beer and bourbons, Guess who I hear. This one. Uh, who picked this one? Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, I was so like, it's Monday let's have night. it at a library. <laughs> <laughs> Monday night, June 3rd, uh, 6 to 8 p.m. No RSVP needed. Just come, but come early because they're saving about 40 seats for us. And if you don't oh, get in, you have to fill up fast. You have to stay downstairs and maybe stay outside on the patio. And it's going to be hot. So you Ugh, should come late. <laughs> hugger, hugger mugger. It is going to be hot. Well, they have yeah. those uh, weird glasses like they have in New Orleans that go like through the, you know, with the crazy <laughs> drinks, you know. Love doubt that. it. The hurricane. I yeah. doubt it. This is a quality craft beer bar. Oh, Paul. sorry. Oh, sorry. Paul. No <laughs> umbrellas in beer. That's just not done. Yeah, we're hoping uh, the .dot .net Rock guys make a, make an appearance Good. because they love bourbon. That's the word, and oh. we're trying to get them to come but too. But will there be bourbon? There are some amazing bourbons there will be on Bourbon Street. Street. <laughs> yes, what there fun. will be Bourbon Street and bourbon I love and New beer. Orleans. New Orleans is such a great town. It's so much. Yeah, fun. it really is. Well, have a great time. Have a hurricane on me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we Not will literally no. No. no, it sounds like, though, oh, there go the lights. I think it is, in fact, a hurricane <laughs> going on in New York City right now. It's amazing how the the light goes down where you are. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps getting so dark. It's, like, really dark out right now. <laughs> it, just, it just got really dark, yeah. It's Look at really, her. She's really, like, it's like uh, you're in a cave or like something. It's like nighttime. I know. Sorry, wow. guys. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Mary Jo. Stay safe and dry, and we'll see you next week. Paul Thorat, YouTube. Paul Thorat's at the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com. Frankly, if you're into Windows, if you're into Microsoft, the, these are two things you must bookmark and visit daily. Winsupersite.com and allaboutmicrosoft.com. And you will. there's no better way to keep up to date on what's going on in Windows. Join us every week to, to chew on it, to talk about it. Uh, and we'll see you next time on Windows Weekly.